It's all come down to this. The World Series begins tonight. The Houston Astros will be hosting the Atlanta Braves for the first game of the best of seven series. The Astros are looking to claim a third World Series title in the last five years. They are going up against an Atlanta team making its first World Series appearance in over 20 years. Joining us now from Minute Maid Park in Houston is MLB insider and game analyst for CBS Sports HQ, Jim Bowden. Jim has also served as general manager for the Cincinnati Reds and the Montreal Expos, who would become the Washington Nationals. Jim, welcome. Great to see you. So the Astros seem to be in the mix every year, while the Braves have not been in the World Series since the 90s. So who has the advantage here? I think the Houston Astros have the advantage here for sure. Why? Because they have a deeper lineup than the Atlanta Braves have. In fact, they have seven hitters in this lineup capable of hitting 300. They've got power from the top of this lineup all the way to the bottom. Of course, they're led by the veterans Carlos Correa, Jose Altuve, and Alex Bregman, three of the best infielders in the sport. But that lineup is so good. Why? Because they hit the other team's best pitching and the other team's best pitching best pitch. And mm -hmm. that really does separate them. On the other side for the Atlanta Braves, they have three really good hitters in the middle of the lineup. you got Freddie Freeman who's the reigning National League MVP. You've got Ozzie Albies, the second baseman who this year became the youngest second baseman in baseball history. Did 30 homers and driving 100 runs in the same year. And their emerging star at third base, Austin Riley, is expected to finish top five in MVP voting this year. But besides those three guys, Atlanta has a lot of power in the lineup but a lot of guys that can be pitched to as well. So I think advantage goes Astros lineup. Very interesting because I was going to you know, dig into that a little bit. What you just said, you know, Houston obviously has a potent offense and the Braves have that great pitching you just mentioned. So you think that offense is going to be more important in this series? Well, I think it's going to be more important just because the Astros hitters are, are capable of hitting great pitching. I mean, I think that really separates it. However, I think one of the keys is going to be, you talked about the Braves, good pitching. Let's talk about the back of the bullpen. They have three left-handed relievers that have only given up two earned runs combined this entire postseason. That's closer Will Smith and left-handed relievers Tyler Matzik and A.J. Minter. They're a huge reason why Atlanta's here. So the matchup late in games in this series with those three left-handers and against the Braves right-handed hitting infield. And remember, Yuli Gurriel at first base who won the American League batting title. Alex Bregman, Jose Altuve, and Carlos Correa are all right-handed hitters. So it's going to be interesting to see how those right-handed hitters do against that left-handed uh, powered bullpen. That's going to be one of the keys to the game. But again, I, I got to give the edge to the Astros. All right, so let's take a step back off the field and uh, talk about management for a second. Atlanta's manager, Brian Snitger, has been in baseball for a long time, but is relatively new to managing. He faces veteran Dusty Baker, who has more than 2,000 career victories. So, you know, which manager has the edge here? Well, I'm going to go with Dusty Baker, the 72-year-old. Look, I've, I've known Dusty Baker my entire baseball life and, you know, watched him closely when he managed the San Francisco Giants, Chicago Cubs, Cincinnati Reds, and Washington Nationals. He won 90 games in all those places. He's only been to the World Series one time. This is his second time. But the one thing in his entire career he was criticized for was not being able to develop young pitchers. It was uh, by using his bullpen too much. He was criticized for not trusting young hitters. But in Houston, over the last couple of years, he's changed all that. He developed the three young starters that we're going to see in this series. Framber Valdez, you're going to see Luis Garcia and Jose Urquidy. Luis Garcia, by the way, best rookie American League pitcher developed by Dusty Baker. Two of the best young hitters in the Astros lineup, Kyle Tucker and Jordan Alvarez. Again, developed by Dusty Baker. And so he's made the adjustments at age 72. He's using analytics that none of us thought he would three years ago. And the one trait that Dusty's always had, and the reason he's been so successful that someday he will be a Hall of Fame manager, is his connectivity with humans. He connects with a 21-year-old as well as he does a 40-year-old, as good as any manager in the sport. And that is a very, very special trait. On the other side, for Brian Snitker, I love him because he's old school. I know exactly how he's going to manage. I don't have to see the lineup card today. It's the same lineup <laughs> against righties versus lefties every day. And same thing with a bullpen. I know he's going to have Will Smith in the ninth, Luke Jackson or Matzik in the seventh and eighth, Minter in the sixth, and Chavez in the fifth. No guessing with Brian. Let him play. Oh, by the way, Brian Snicker, the only manager of the 30 teams that doesn't have mandatory batting practice ever. 
That's what separates him. Oh my gosh, it looks like you could be manager if, if that all uh, proves to be true. <laughs> so, so Jim, the series will end baseball's return from the COVID, COVID shortened and fanless season. You know, has the return overall been successful? Well, it's been very taxing on the pitchers. And we saw in the Dodgers Brave series, the Dodgers won 106 games in the regular season. They were arguably the best team in baseball, but they ran out of gas. They ran out of innings, quite frankly, and the taxing from last year to this year, the increase of innings really caught up to them. The question is, now that we're in the World Series and Halloween's just around the corner, will the innings uh, increase from last year's pandemic year to this year cost one of these teams the World Series? We don't know that yet. Right now, going into the series, both starters look on both sides look like it hasn't affected them. But you don't know when all of a sudden the shoulder and the elbow kind of run out of gas. So baseball's done a good job of bouncing back from the pandemic. Um, thankfully, we haven't had any serious illnesses and no one so far has passed away from COVID. Baseball deserves a lot of credit for the protocols that were in place and followed. Hopefully, we won't have anyone test positive in this World Series. Remember a year ago, Justin Turner tested positive in inning six of the clinching game for the Dodgers. Let's hope and pray that doesn't happen in this series. But so far, it seems to me, outside of all of us wearing masks, things seem to be back to normal, and that's a good thing for baseball and society. So I don't really have to ask because I can, I can sort of infer this from this conversation, but you pretty much think the Astros have this one, right, the 2021 World Series champs? I mean, Tanya, let me put it this way. If Lance McCullers Jr. was healthy, I would have picked the Astros to win in five games. But I think we're going to have a good series, and I think the series is going to go to six games. I think we're going to end up back here in Houston. But I'm going with the Astros because this lineup they have is an all-star lineup. It's not a normal lineup. It is one of the most special lineups I've seen over the last decade, and I think that'll be the difference in the series. All right, it'll be some fun baseball to watch for sure. Jim Bowden, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it.